Hi, my name is Jay from Turning Up Teachers. Thanks for joining us. I have three interesting ways that you can use technology in, in your art classroom. Um, I really encourage you to check it out. I think you'll find something fun. But first, a message from a Hi, my name is Jen. You might recognize me from the Turning Up Teachers channel um, previously where I talked about one of my favorite tech tools, we video. Um, I also happen to be a former art teacher, so I'm doing a video today on my channel all about three of my favorite visual arts tools. Um, my channel is called Reset EDU, it's my Google Innovator project where I try to uh, create short videos um, with just small simple ways teachers can shift their thinking um, either about classroom spaces, um, stress, mindset, relationships, curriculum, all of those things, just small things you can do to make life better for yourself and for your students in the world of education. So hopefully you'll stop by. Um, Check it out, give it a like, subscribe, and all of that jazz, um, and thanks. Classroom. So if we can smash together some technology and creative energy from um, an art perspective, I think we can make some really fun things. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to do some pixel art. I'll start by showing you a few examples that some of my grade three students have done in the past. So here's an example of a, like a wrestler, and you can see that they've turned the spreadsheet into almost a centimeter paper type grid. And basically by using the paint can on each pixel, you can choose which color to fill. And he came up with a, a character, which is kind of a lot of fun. And, and here's another example here where someone created a pixel character, which you can see taking a screenshot of that later and, and doing something fun with that character. Um, it's uh, you can integrate with some other subjects, but you'll see here that this student actually I, I did a, a math focus as well and had them take a look at their total number of pixels. And we're looking at some fractional amounts for some of the different colors. And we actually pulled some of those fractions into a math lesson the following day. So that was kind of neat. So I'd like to show you how easy it is to um, create um, some pixel art. Oh, that's not the one. And here we are here. So we have a, a blank sheet. I just opened a Google Sheet. And if you click on this box in the top left under um, the FX button and click on it, it highlights everything. That means that whatever you do to one cell will happen to all the cells. So just to show you that again, I'm gonna click on that box and then I'm gonna go over here and grab the handle between A and B. And I wanna make my square shape. And once that's done, I've made my uh, grid ready to go. And again, you can just choose how you want to um, use your shading to create a bit of a scene. Uh, obviously, it doesn't need to be a character. Um, it can be all sorts of different things. But what I'd have students do is, is keep track of the different colors they're using, um, the total amount of pixels that they're using. And you can quickly um, get some, some neat characters or some neat uh, uh, background designs completed in almost one of those old-fashioned Atari-style video game. Uh, pixelated formats. So that's one thing um, I like to do with my students every year. Another that was kind of new and exciting for me this year was uh, using Padlet as uh, almost like a gallery for photography. And if you've never had the opportunity to take your students outside just to photograph um, around the schoolyard, uh, look at all the textures you can find just from a, a quick walk around. Um, or if you have the opportunity to go on a field trip, even better. So we have some funguses here. Uh, we have some interesting looking uh, creatures that were found and some close-ups of, uh, I think that's a slug and some mushrooms. So to get this um, zoomed in view, we just use iPads and I want to draw your attention to um, what's called a macro lens. It's a clip-on lens that you can clip onto any phone or tablet. It worked great with the iPads and uh, my students went through uh, for a hike through the forest and you get nice and close and it gets you uh, when you get that steady hand and get and get practiced with it you can take some really incredible close-up shots so i then used padlet so my students could then um, i gave them the link i created a padlet and once all the students had the link we were able to upload the photographs that they took and i was able to send this then home as a collection to all the parents afterwards and uh, we also projected this during an assembly just to see if we could have some of the other students in the school guess what we found. So when you look at the world up up close, I love that photograph of Moss, for example. Um, 
And again, these really fantastic photographs ended up being students' backdrops on their computers and, uh, you know, just taking that image as a backdrop and doing poetry over top. Um, it just really kind of made some of our work feel alive. They were pretty excited with some of uh, the photographs they, they took. They all felt like they're National Geographic uh, photographers. So using a macro lens, something like this, I ordered some cheap ones off Amazon, I think for $7. Um, it came with fisheye lens as well, which is kind of neat. Um, for, for that little investment, you can uh, do some really cool things from a, a photography perspective uh, in addition, you know, in, in use with our, our mobile devices and Padlet as a digital way to share our thinking. Okay, so we have the pixel art, we have Padlet and photography, macro photography, uh, especially if you get the chance. The last one I'd like to go over is my use of Google Drawings, which of course is um, not as many people talk about Google Drawings as, as, as should. It's one of my absolute favorite apps. And I like for my students to use real images. If they have their own pictures, that's great. But you'll see, I just went to the insert image and went to a Google search. And perhaps we're focusing on landforms uh, or, or something to that effect. And I want them to use um, a visual way with no words to explain what they learned about landforms, or you can give them a texture hunt or a color hunt. Perhaps you're looking at warm versus cool. There's lots of different ways that you can kind of give them a focus um, as, as they build what we're going to call a, a quilt together. But I'm going to focus on the land quilt. So I'm going to look up soil first, for instance, perhaps I'm teaching grade three this year. I really like um, this, this soil here. I'm going to select that image. I'm going to put that into um, my space here, into my slide, my uh, uh, poster area for the drawing. And I, I want to make this a, a square shape. So I'm just going to drag my handles or I can crop it um, and make it into more of a square. And, and you'll, you'll see in a minute uh, why that square shape is important because I, I want to cut this into a triangle. So, and we're going to place all these different sorts of triangles together to make something that looks a bit, bit like a quilt using photographs or image searches. So when you highlight an image and the blue line goes around like that and you go to the crop button, we know we can crop it into a rectangular shape. But beside that crop button is a down arrow and that's called masking. And that means you can cut this picture into any of these shapes. So I'm going to choose the right angle triangle. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter there. And you can tell it's a little bit stretched. So I'm going to just kind of, again, use those handles until I'm happy. And it's it's squarish. Obviously, when we're talking about students, that might not be a perfect thing. Um, but I'm asking students to visualize a row of triangles across the top and a row of triangles underneath. Looks like I still need to make my triangle a bit smaller so I'd be able to fit um, a row underneath as well. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get a different image now and make it fit. And we're gonna to start to put together this puzzle piece of, of images. This time, perhaps I'm looking for um, or, or a different texture that I found. I like the green in this one. There'll be a bit of contrast against the, the dry soil. So again, I'm gonna to go to my mask button. I'm going to mask a triangular shape and I need it to fit so it's square shape. When I say that, I'm talking about the, the blue outline around the image that's been cropped. If this is a square shape, um, then it's the type of triangle we'll need. And we can see right now this triangle is much too large. So I'm going to kind of use my handles to um, make it the same size that way and stretch it back this way. And I, I went a bit too far. And I just want to kind of get as close as we can. So it looks like I found it. I can now grab that circle to turn my image around and I'm gonna place it into the puzzle piece here, okay? So I'd continue with this and continue to add more triangles as we go and you'd have a really visual um, kaleidoscopic kind of, of view of, of, of these images. And my students last year uh, really took it to heart and had about, oh, I think we had like 12 triangles. They shrunk these down even and were able to add um, lots of details and, and, and lots of triangles into the mix. And uh, when you kind of bring in different sorts of color tones, I tried to have them not have similar colors touching so that it you know, kind of created an interesting effect. I'm gonna slide you over now to one that is a little bit different. So we have some triangles here. We have some rectangular shapes some smaller triangles. Um, I have some trapezoidal uh, cutouts I did as well uh, with the masking. And for this one, I had students focus on one quarter of the page. And if I click down and drag, and I'm gonna highlight 
all of those images at once. And if I kind of right click or, or double tap, I'm going to group those together. So that now counts as one image. So now that that's one image, the whole thing would move like that. I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to put the copy beside it. And now what I want to do is again, right click or double tap. I'm going to go to rotate and flip horizontally. And I'm now creating something of a kaleidoscopic um, image here. And I'm going to go ahead and actually just highlight that whole top piece. And again, I'm going to uh, group. I'm going to copy this and paste it underneath. So this time I'm going to do a vertical. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to rotate and flip vertically. So I've now finished, and I'm going to drag that up just a little bit to get that blue line to disappear. There, almost right in the middle. So I've taken one quarter of a page and just did some copying and pasting and flipping um, to create a kaleidoscopic uh, a piece of work here. And this is neat for um, any sorts of image where you just have a quarter of an image and students can uh, create their own kaleidoscopic version. Again, this is just begging to have some poetry written over top or some text boxes, um, kind of you can integrate your art into your other subject areas. So there's my three ideas. Uh, try some pixel art. Definitely look into doing some macro lens photography and uh, what I like calling a land quilt kaleidoscope. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, learning with us today. Thanks for tuning in. And by all means, if you have a cool idea, we'd love for you to create a tutorial for us on turning up, or turning up teachers. Thank you.